whether religion is man-made is a question for philosophers or theologians. But the forms are man-made. They are a human response to something. As a historian of religions, I am interested in those expressions. The joy of life discovered by the Greeks is not a profane type of enjoyment, it reveals the bliss of existing, of sharing, even fugitively, in the spontaneity of life and the majesty of the world. Like so many others before and after them, the Greeks learned that the surest way to escape from time is to exploit the wealth, at first sight impossible to suspect, of the lived instant. It is not without fear and trembling, that a historian of religion approaches the problem of myth. This is not only because of that preliminary embarrassing question, what is intended by myth? It is also because the answers given depend for the most part on the documents selected. The primitive magician, the medicine man or shaman is not only a sick man, he is above all, a sick man who has been cured, who has succeeded in curing himself. The profane man cannot utterly abolish his past, since he himself is a product of his past. He forms himself by a series of denials and refusals, but he continues to be haunted by the realities that he has refused and denied. To acquire a world of his own, he has desacralized the world in which his ancestors lived, but to do so he has been obliged to adopt an earlier type of behavior, and that behavior is still emotionally present in him, in one form or another, ready to be reactualized in his deepest being. A religious phenomenon will only be recognized as such if it is grasped at its own level, that is to say, if it is studied as something religious. To try to grasp the essence of such phenomenon by means of physiology, psychology, sociology, economics, linguistics and art, or any other study is false, it misses the one unique and irreducible element in it, the element of the sacred. Man makes himself, and he only makes himself completely in proportion as he desacralizes himself and the world. The sacred is the prime obstacle to his freedom. He will become himself only when he is totally demysticized. He will not be truly free until he has killed the last god. The crude product of nature, the object fashioned by the industry of man, acquire their reality their identity, only to the extent of their participation in a transcendent reality. The interpretations of Freud are more and more successful, because they are among the myths accessible to modern man. Psychoanalysis justifies its importance, by asserting that it forces you to look to and accept reality. But what sort of reality? A reality conditioned by the materialistic and scientific ideology of psychoanalysis, that is, a historical product. In one way or another one lives the myth, in the sense that one is seized by the sacred, exalting power of the events recollected or reenacted. The majority of men without religion, still hold to pseudo-religions and degenerated mythologies, there is nothing surprising in this, for profane man is the descendant of homo religious and he cannot wipe out his own history.
modern non-religious man assumes a tragic existence, and his existential choice is not without its greatness. The great cosmic illusion is a hierophany. One is devoured by time, not because one lives in time, but because one believes in its reality, and therefore forgets or despises eternity. In imitating the exemplary acts of a god or of a mythic hero, or simply by recounting their adventures, the man of an archaic society detaches himself from profane time, and magically re-enters the great time, the sacred time. It would be frightening to think that in all the cosmos, which is so harmonious, so complete and equal to itself, that only human life is happening randomly, that only one's destiny lacks meaning. For those to whom a stone reveals itself as sacred, its immediate reality is transmuted into supernatural reality. In other words, for those who have a religious experience, all nature is capable of revealing itself as cosmic sacrality. The history of religions reaches down and makes contact with that which is essentially human, the relation of man to the sacred. The history of religions can play an extremely important role in the crisis we are living through. The crises of modern man are to a large extent religious ones, insofar as they are an awakening of his awareness to an absence of meaning.